Welcome to episode 39 of All the Stitches. This is also floss tube number eight. My name is Colleen and I'm coming to you from the Lakes region of New Hampshire in the United States. I'm here today to talk about some of my cross stitch finishes and some works in progress and some plans. The last half of this episode is going to be my current knitting finishes and my works in progress, which for some reason I have an awful lot of knitting works in progress. I will jump right in with cross stitch. The first thing I finished is something that I showed last time, but it is fully finished now and framed. And that is Stitcher. Luminous Fiber Arts. It is stitched on 25 count vintage cloth by Lori Holt. I'm checking my notes as I talk here. Um, the color is parchment. The red thread is a DMC 816. I just want to highlight the frame because the frame was made by Signed Numbered on Etsy. I know a lot of needleworkers use them and there's a good reason for that. They were wonderful. I ordered this frame and it's the beaded frame that's on their site. And I, when I, I picked the color, I picked a color that was called Ruby. When I got it and put it with my piece, it was, it was really the wrong red for my thread. Not their fault, my fault. I really picked the wrong red. It was very bright. So I reached out to them, their names, Leah and Phil are the owners, and I reached out to them and I said, you know, I don't know how you finish this frame, but I'm wondering what would you recommend as far as me, re my repainting it? What should I use? What kinds of paint or whatever? Because I don't know how, you know, if it was polyurethane or however they finished it. So they got right back to me and they suggested what I do. And then... Leah said, or you could just return it to us and we'll refinish it if you pay postage and then we'll pay the postage back to you. And I couldn't resist that. And I'm so glad I did because they did a much better job than I would have. But it was so kind of them. And I, I really, you know, talk about a good, great way to do business. I will most definitely go to them first next time. And I hope you will too. That is signed and numbered on Etsy. My next finish was a quick little Sunday stitch, I called it. And it is this. This is Home is Where the Wool Is. It's a pattern, a chart from Tracy Campbell, also on Etsy. And I stitched it as I do my usual Sunday stitch, which is a simple, I try to keep a very simple, easy stitch. And I stitched it on a 14 count Ada with the called for threads. There's a ton and a half of outline stitching. I'm not even sure I did it all uh, because I just was tired of outline stitching, <laughs> but it's very cute. I have it hanging on a piece of yarn, of course. And the uh, frame here, I wanna talk about the frame. It is from Stitch Life Studio, also on Etsy. And it is a piece of wood uh, that's hollowed out, you know, it's cut like a frame, right? So then you take the a six inch hoop I just used a very old six inch wooden hoop that I had. You insert it under these elastics, which keep the, the uh, piece tucked in there. And then I just, I started to finish off the edges and then I said, why should I bother? I just cut my Ada all around the edges, close as close as I could to the, um, to the hoop. And 
I didn't like seeing the back of it. So I just cut out a piece of foam core board to put on the back. But I think it's it's a really quick and effective way to frame something simple and something round, which is always a problem to, to frame something round. My focus stitch has been this chart from the drawn thread called North Country Sampler. And I've really been focusing on this because I have, I am almost done. Um, typical, I'm finding at least based on, this is the second pattern I've stitched from a drawn thread. It's not a lot of color variation. In this case, there's a lot of greens and brown, different shades, but still a lot of greens and browns. <laughs> so I just, I've always figured the designers are smarter than I am about their, their color choices. So I'll stick with that. But I'm really enjoying this a lot. I changed the the word the wording and the in this part it's all one over one. This is a 25 count something Lugana. Um and most of it's all called for thread, almost all called for thread, mostly DMC. I changed this verse because I liked it better than the one in the chart. This verse says, nature is not a place to visit, it is home. So then, of course, it changed the spacing, and I just inserted a little tree in the middle, which I may add to, I may remove and put in two trees or something. I'm still playing with that. I have my initials in the year and my town here, and I have that space in the middle, which I'm also still playing with little trees, little acorns, uh, little greenery things. I, I'm not quite sure. If you have any ideas, let me know. Leave a comment below. But I'm using, I've, I've been going through this book, the Ultimate Sampler motif, motif Source Book by Brenda Keys. I've been going through this book to find some little motifs, and I, I think I'll have no problem with that. But I'm almost done. I'm, I just have um, the final portion is just like a little, little lake or something river with two fish in there. So I'm getting there. I decided that um, when I wanted to chart out the, the different phrase and my, my initials and, and all that, I took a piece of graph paper, you know, regular old graph paper, and I started to chart it out. But since the space was one over one on 25 count, there was a, you know, you could paste graph paper together six feet wide and <laughs> still, it would still run off the page. So I said, there has to be a better way than use graph paper. So I picked up from Amazon this booklet of cross-stitch paper. They have all different sizes. I got the 16 count which I think is um, a pretty good idea, maybe for simple things. But what I was finding when I wanted to make some changes, you know, you can use pencil and then you erase, and then if you want to color something in to see how it would look in a particular color, I was using colored pencil. It's really hard to erase colored pencils. So I didn't think that was working very well. So... I went online and I looked at different types of apps or software for cross-stitch design. And I honestly, I've said there's been some things in my mind I wanted to just design simple things, but I honestly didn't want to go there because that can become a whole thing and then it becomes a whole nother hobby, right? So I always said I'm not going to do it. But after looking at several reviews and things, I saw... I thought that Mac Stitch would be a good program to use. 
And I still, even then I thought, you know, I really don't want to get into this and pay a lot of money for something that's really going to be just for my own use. So I went to the website, I downloaded uh, the demo version, and I played with it a little bit, and oh, I fell in love with it. So <laughs> I looked at the price, and it's only $45. I think that's pretty darn good. And I decided to go for it. So I have been playing, spending way too many hours doing that. But I was able to, to um, graph out the words that I put into this sampler and play with some of the little motifs and things that I want to put in that, in that um, drawn thread piece. So what can I say? I'm going to insert a, just a quick little video of me playing with it, just so you can sort of see the screen. It's not meant to be any kind of tutorial at all, but um, you can take a quick look at it right here. Here is a simple little tour of what I'm doing on Mac Stitch. Um, just as you can see over on the left-hand side where my mouse is, there's a range of DMC colors here. There's more, you can add more and you can add also some other types of, and other brands of thread. I'm not gonna get into too much detail. I just wanna show you what I've been playing with. This is uh, what I've had on my mind. It's uh, something I've thought would be a cute stitch. And, um, I want it to be set up sort of like a quilt. So these lines uh, going here and there are actually, oh, I just drew a line, right? I'll have to erase that. It's it's so easy to, uh, <laughs> to just hit your mouse and uh, make something change, but it's okay. Um, so yeah, it, I want it to be set up like a quilt with these lines in between, um, just, uh, what would you call them? Like quilt stitches or back stitches, but, you know, skipping a space in between. I suspect there's a name for that, but, and, um, so I have a snowman over here, a long, tall snowman, and this is by no means done. As you can see, I, I a little hat, a bowl of soup. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to put in here. Um, here's a cup of hot cocoa, a pair of boots. These are going to be, just move the screen over a little bit. Over here is going to be a pair of knit socks. I think I'll do striped socks pair of long johns. I think I'm going to try to do part of a Fair Isle sweater here. And then I have mittens here. And that's it. I think for my first little design, once I figure out how to get it all together and um, save it, print it, all that, then I can start stitching it and see how how the whole thing works. But it was pretty easy, and I'm really just showing this to you to show you that this is someone who, me, who, you know, has a good deal of experience with using computers, playing with computers, but I haven't even looked at the manual, and I've been able to just figure out using all these menu items up above just being able to figure out how to design this and save it and move things around and, and play with it. So um, that's my little tour of Mac Stitch. Okay, so what else have I been working on? I have been keeping up with my 25th of the month stitch, which is um, by Waxing Moon Designs, Search the Sky. And you can see that I've now finished all the house at the bottom and all the trees. And I have finally moved on to the snowflakes. So there's going to be many snowflakes around the edges of all this. And then I will finally be done. It has been, <laughs> I don't know, 
one day a month is a little bit frustrating as far as um there if that day if that that one day a month that you work on something it turns out to be a day that you don't get to do a lot of stitching it's a little frustrating so we shall see but i'd like to finish that it that may be within a couple of months still so what I've also been doing to keep myself interested is working on another Sunday stitch, which has turned into more of a weekend stitch. But it is Be Yourself. It is by Gail Bussy, Busey from Imaginating. Of course, I love it because it has a sheep, but I thought it was very sweet. I think with this, I want to make a little quilt out of it. You know, a fabric frame. I don't know why, I just had that in mind. I thought it would go well here, actually. This is my progress. I forgot my board. So I'll use this. Here's my progress. Now that's just a couple of weekends. So that's going by pretty quickly. And I've only done this again. My Sunday stitch is on 14 count and it's just a white Ada. And it's nice and easy and stress-free. Now, last month, or yeah, it was last month when I, I did my episode that included talking about floss, um, floss storage and floss usage. Um, I and by the way, I really appreciate anyone who left a comment there and talked about their how they use how they store their flosses and what m method they use um, when they're stitching it. So I really appreciate that. Read through that last episode, the comments, and see there's some interesting thoughts there. And I can't believe I forgot to show you one of the floss holders that I meant to mention. And you've probably all seen these by now. They're available on Etsy and probably other places. This one is by Fireweed Lane, and she's done a really nice job with it. Um, there's some sort of stiffener in here to hold it, but if you're a bobbinator like me, what a nice way to keep your floss while you're working on your project. It's very tight when you first get it. It feels like, oh, with these... They're, they're not going to all fit in there, but it stretches. The vinyl stretches out a little bit. And um, this, they kept so neat. Like my other one that I showed you, there were just floss ends everywhere. But in this, they're just kept so neatly. So I want to get more or maybe make more of these, maybe for bigger projects. Um and play with that a little bit. I really recommend this for anyone who works on bobbins. In my cross-stitch world, um, since I'm almost done with that Northwoods sampler, North Country sampler, I keep calling it Northwoods, I have decided that I'm gonna focus on something I've been wanting to focus on a long time. Now, this is nothing new. You've probably all seen Keeper of the Pins from With Thy Needle and Thread. And, you know, don't come here for anything newfangled because <laughs> it takes me a while to get around to things. So it, probably everything I've shown you is something you've seen before, but that's okay because we all love it, right? So I'm going to start playing with this little booklet and start making some of these little pin cushions and things. And though that will be my main focus. I have collected all the thread. A lot of red there. And I'm going to do it on a 32 count vintage country mocha. And I think I have a big piece here. I have a half yard and I'm just going to start stitching away over in one corner and see how many I can fit and on this piece of fabric. And then when I've had enough tomato pink cushions, <laughs> then I will stop and move on to something else. So this segment is going to be all about knitting because for some reason I cannot stop starting new things and what can I say it's just fun. An update on my 
Hashtag Christmas Sock Along 2023. That's on Instagram for anyone that wants that is interested. Either take a look or go in and put in some of your Christmas yarn. At the beginning of the year, I started knitting from my Christmas yarn stash. And so far, I have knit five pair of socks. And we're in June. I'm almost done with my sixth pair. This is my fifth pair. Yes, they are very strange looking sock. See the heel? It's a stretchy ribbing. It's called the Magic Heel Socks by the Autumn Acorn, the pattern is. The yarn is from West Yorkshire Spinners and it is last year's Christmas yarn, which was called Gingerbread. Now I'm gonna show you everything else I'm working on in the knitting world. I don't know why I have so many things started, but I do. I know why. I get bored with one and then I move on. I will finish them all eventually. This is the Advent Cowl Wallop. I am only half done. So it does get wound around the neck twice. I put yarn overs between each color that wasn't in the pattern. And I used yarn, a yarn advent from Ducky Darlings that I got several years ago now. And so I'm half done. I start repeating my colors now. And then I will sew the edges together and close it up and it becomes a very long <laughs> cowl. My next project I'm not doing these in any order. I'm just grabbing what I can reach. This is the Alaska sweater. I've made one Alaska sweater. Here's the Alaska sweater. By Camille Desatel. Desato. I'm sure that's not correct, but. And I'm using, I am knitting with black. I didn't think I'd ever knit with black because I didn't think I'd be able to see it. But guess what? Because it's so tweeted, heavily tweeted, I can see it just fine. And you can see I've split for the sleeves and now I have miles of body to knit, just straight stitch. And, um, and I have to add the, the collar on as well. I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to think about the trees along the bottom, the color work. And in that, I'm going to use a gray. So the, the trees are going to be gray. The last Alaska sweater I, I knit was um, a kit I got from Knit Circus Yarns. And, and I love their yarns, but I selected the wrong color, the wrong kit. And I ended up with a yellow sweater with dark blue trees, which is really beautiful. But... It's stranded knitting, and you can see the dark blue in behind the yellow, and that's always bothered me. And tell you the truth, I have never worn that sweater because it bothers me that much. That's why I went with the black on this one. And we shall see how it goes with this. The yarn is, I should say, the yarn is a Rowan felted tweed, so it's a very... Uh, woolly yarn. Um, it has alpaca in it and it's very warm and it sheds a lot. Something else I started along the way. This is the Tale as Old as Time Cowl by Ann Valley. And here it is so far. Another long cowl. What am I thinking of? But I couldn't resist. This is another one where the ends, you make a very long cowl and then you graft the ends together. So it just wraps around. Isn't that gorgeous yarn? I love this. Here it is wound up. It's a fingering weight yarn. And here is another skein. This is a must stash yarn. And this one is called Denali. Love this. So this has been something I pick up if I'm going to a social knitting 
if I'm going to be socially knitting somewhere and there's lots of talking, this is just a simple knit in the round. I've been working on these forever. I don't know why I can't, I can't bring myself to come back to it, but I am happy with it. I just can't bring myself to make. This is a pattern from Sophia Camelborn, Heart of the Forest Mittens. Haven't been out of the my project bag for quite a while here, so here are the mittens. This gets folded over. Obviously, I need to concentrate on this color work. I am finally at the tip of the finger, so I don't know why I don't just finish the darn things. This was a good exercise in busy color work for me. Um, but I definitely have to concentrate on them. And I think I realize why I kind of lost steam on them. As I'm knitting them, I'm realizing it's really big. Now this was a one size only pattern. So that kind of explains it. I'm just hoping when I finish off the, the thumb and, and the fingers, it won't feel quite so big, like the little heart in the pattern. But I do love them. Um, if I can ever get this one done, I will have another one to knit. <laughs> and I'm using yarn from fin Rama Finnell. Another very um, sheepy yarn. All these sheepy yarns are beautiful for color work, but as the weather gets warm, they're not very pleasant to work with, which is part of the reason the Alaska sweater has stalled as well as those mittens. Um, here is my current um, Christmas <laughs> sock along 2023, hashtag on Instagram, please join in, as I try to knit through my Christmas yarn um, through the whole year. This is pair number six. This is I'm just a plain vanilla sock. And this is a yarn from, I'm trying to find the label. This is my oldest, I think it's my oldest sock yarn. Found it. It is Lorna's Laces. It is, I wish there was a year on it because it's quite old. Um, Golden Holidays is the name of the color. Probably no longer around. I'm not even sure if Lorna's Laces is around anymore. I should check that. I just want to show you something interesting that's happening with this. So this came in two small skeins. I think 250 gram skeins. Um, look at what the yarn is doing. I think it's supposed to be striping like this, but this one, this skein is pooling. I'm a little bit disappointed, I'd say, but I'm gonna keep going. There are only socks. And I'm really wondering if knitters out there have had the same issue. I bought them at the same time. <laughs> But I'm wondering if it's my fault if I had, when I wound this yarn from the skein, I wonder if I took a different end on the second skein and wound from the other end of that skein. Have you had that issue, knitters out there? I'd be very curious. Leave a comment below if you have seen that happen with sock yarns that are sold in separate skeins like that. This is my last thing to show you today. And as if I didn't have enough knitting going on and cross-stitch, I started a blanket. It's a small blanket. It's just a little lap size blanket. Not a lot to show, but isn't it lovely yarn? I love the variation here. And it's just a garter stitch. 
and I slipped the first stitch on every row. That's, and I just keep, I'll just keep knitting every skein. It's DK weight yarn, and I'll keep knitting every skein until I get to the next skein and add, then add that. This is yarn from Moon Glow, Moon Glow Yarn Company. They have gorgeous yarn. This is a superwash merino. Just looking if there's anything else in it, and there isn't. It's almost like I'm surprised that there's no silk in it or something. It is, or cashmere. It is so soft, incredibly beautiful. And this is a a very simple blanket pattern that they have been posting on their Instagram page and said to, if you want to join in, join Use in. Use all the noise. Here's the rest of it. I'm not going to take it out because it will make so much noise. So I'm just going to knit until all of this yarn is gone and it should be a nice, good size um, blanket just a little lap throw and I'm very excited about that. I love working on it so much. So if you want to join, they suggest casting on, this is DK weight yarn. You could do it in any kind of yarn, right? They suggest casting on 158 stitches. I cast on 160 stitches. I actually just cast on too many and I just left it on. It didn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're just doing garter stitch back and forth and um, it'll be slightly wider. But um, that is what, when I just want some nice comfort knitting, I'll sit and work on that blanket. That is all I have for today. And I hope you enjoyed seeing both the cross stitch and the knitting. Please be sure to leave any comments below, any questions, anything. I put any information about anything I mentioned in the description box below, so take a look there. And until next time, which seems to be averaging about once a month, I'm doing a video. So until next time, I hope all of your stitches bring joy.